All right, I uh, uh, I've got the uh, the DJI Micro back on the bench. Uh, we're gonna try and wrap this guy up tonight as best we can. Anyway, uh, first thing I need to do is uh, get these motors attached. And uh, looking at them, I think I'm just gonna wire them. Leave these wires at their current length and put them on, and then try and tuck them in as I set the top down on it as best I can. Anyway, so. They should reach. Um, so if we kind of do a quick uh, drive run here of our setup, mm, those aren't going to be long enough, are they? Let's just grab a couple of slightly longer ones. Let's go with some six mil. What we're going to do, just to make sure that we've got the right length for these guys, is run one of these down into the top like so. Might as well do the other one while we're at it. And then we need a foot coming up like so. Is that going to be too long? Let's hope not. What I'm planning on doing is just kind of running them a bit like so, and then right up over top. That should keep them out of the... I should be able to tuck those in nice and close, mostly, and get them up on top there. I think that'll work. Uh, I don't foresee any problems with that. So, hang on a minute. I'm moving my microphone. I know it's going to suck. All right, better, I think, I hope. Yeah, so that's the plan for tonight, is to get all of our uh, motors connected to this guy, and then uh, we'll get um, uh, uh, mostly fixed up and uh, um, in position. So that should work, I hope. And uh, why don't we go ahead and put in another, why don't we go ahead and mount this guy, just for real. For real. Two little six millimeter screws going in the bottom. Hold this guy in place. Really don't need all four on a micro. I mean, you don't need a lot on a micro anyway. And then go ahead and do this one. Ugh. Screws. Always good to have more screws. Can't go wrong with more. And I sort these out after I'm done with the build generally and put them back in the cases. That way I I never run out of screws. I mean, never. I mean I don't I mean, never. The weird ones like the uh, you know, like the 30 millimeter long two M2s. Yeah, you run out of those. But, but, you know, the fours and the sixes. Yeah. Keep track of them. Put them away. Measure them when you put them away. All good. Yep. And it only takes a minute to go through them. You'd be surprised. You think, oh, Jesus. You can spend a half an hour doing that. But. You 3D print out a little sorting tray, and it really goes pretty quick. And then you get to be to the point where you can spot them in a second, the difference between a four and a six, and then it's even faster. And you're like, oh, I'm done. Boom, boom, boom. Put them in the sorting tray. Off they go. Grab all the fours, put those in the sorting tray, dump them into the bin, and you're done. Easy peasy. One and two, and that guy's gonna go up and come in, do right like that. Yeah, I'm I'm leaving these literally at their the length they come in the package. 
because I got a feeling I'm going to need every bit of that length. Just to get them on and off and off again. Now set that aside. We're going to run M6s, or I keep saying M6, but they're all M2 screws. They're 6 millimeter in length M2s. There may be one or two five millimeter length ones in here. I, I got a couple of those and just kind of, I decided not to dump them in with the fours because if you need a four, you go for a four. But if you need something longer, you don't really care if it's a five or a six. for this actually I uh, like I said the flex RC stuff I got flex RC ninja frame coming so if this guy flies like shit and it very well might um, we're gonna go ahead and just swap everything over to the flex RC I mean literally everything best we can and uh, get that guy flying and that's that's another one I'm actually really excited for the CADX DJI clone, or licensed clone, I should say. It's not a true clone, really. Um, I found out today from Joshua Bardwell that the uh, the clone is not just a VTX. I was worried that it was just going to be the VTX and not the control as well. And it's using the exact same uh, uh, configuration. So. I got a nylon one stuck in there somehow. That's the other thing I'm pretty good at is picking up just the ones that are either magnetic or metal. Uh, and the nylon ones go in the nylon box and the metal ones go in this box. But yeah, the um, found out that the, uh, the uh, well shit, uh, the DJI clone from Cadex which is supposed to be for 75 bucks, which I'm going to call a little bit of bullshit on that. It doesn't have onboard recording, but still, the price seems a little low. It's only got one antenna. That that seems fine. I mean, it's having two antennas is a little bit ridiculous. Um, and then uh, having two, uh, you know, having the onboard stuff and everything else. Anyway, it, it's, it's all just a little bit ridiculous, if you ask me. The fact that there's no mounting holes, I mean, seriously, DJI? Mounting holes. How do you forget to put mounting holes in your product? I mean, every single thing that's FPV related has mounting holes. Uh, I... It's like, oh, well, we're going to be different. You know what I use? I use fucking tape. Never mind. I'm not, I'm not going to get started. Tape. Tape. <laughs> mm -hmm. That'll hold it. There. Tape it on. <laughs> it's genius. It's how we save weight. Yeah. No. Nope. Not, not, a, not, the, not the design we'd hoped for. <laughs> but hey. You know... I can't argue with the results. Here is what we're going to do. I am going to take about a millimeter off the end of this guy. Like so. There's one. There's two. There's three. Two, three, one, two, 
three. Yeah, these pretend leads are just a tiny bit too long for these pads. So I'm saying goodbye to the last millimeter or so. And that should be good enough. Yeah, that uh, the Cadex looks like it could be a winner. We'll see. We can hope, right? Always good to have a little, I don't want to call it competition, but alternative to, you know, a manufacturer's lock-in or monopoly product. Nope. <clears throat> Shit is just not gonna melt. Yeah, should have done this to begin with. Never fails. This lead free solder that used the factory was really shit. To everybody who says, don't breathe the smoke, yeah, the smoke's fine for you. It's the flux. Flux isn't basically non toxic, it's just a cleaner, it's a mild, very mild uh, joint. Uh, it, keeps, it keeps the joint from oxidizing prematurely because uh, that's what really destroys the bond is oxygen getting in there and just making it so that solder doesn't stick together. So it's the exact same reason welders use welding gas which is basically an inert gas. Um, the flux is very much similar and uh, that's what the smoke is. There's no lead in the smoke. At least that's my understanding. And I'm not like doing experiments to figure it out. I'm not trying to breathe it. But if you get some, it's not the end of the world. My grandma, she worked with solder every day of her life. She died of a respiratory illness, but never mind that. She smoked too. <laughs> yeah. I'm betting it was the smoke. All right. Good. Once more into the breach, dear friends. Okay, one down. I want the middle one to go to the middle. That always helps. Two. Come on, quit fighting me. Three. I'm going to say that's not too bad, but I'm going to have to check it with an ohm meter. So, 
the way to check these with an ohm meter is to look for like zero resistance between the pads. Uh, if you get any amount of ohms uh, registering here, it means that the it's going through the windings and back through the board. That's fine. But if you get any sort of zero value, you pretty much guaranteed you have a short. So just keep that in mind when you're wiring up an ESC that you want to see a value because a continuity check doesn't work. Because it is con continuous. Sort of. Good. Good, good, good. Okay. Now. Fight me on this. I don't want to do this. Okay. Yeah, that's not going to happen. All right, so in this particular case, I need the sucker. Uh, yeah, I done goofed a bit. I don't know if you can see this or not. Let's check to make sure we're still recording. I fixed my camera, so hopefully that does it. Good. Okay. Much better. Yep. Good. We'll call that acceptable. Now, put these guys back together. I think. This is called solder wick, and it comes in handy 
about twice a year, honestly. And the way it works is it's basically just really, really super fine wire. Okay. And you kind of spread it out into a little fan. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to touch the solder and then we're going to try and scoop it up with this little fan. So, and, and that's just to kind of keep it from becoming more of a problem than it already is. It's basically just a cleanup tool for bad solder jobs. And I think I think we may have done it. We're going to double check this with a continuity meter. Because why wouldn't we? Just check between here good God Yeah, gonna have to bust out the big guns here. Welcome back. Uh, we are working on the DJI Micro tonight. Uh, I have just successfully taken a uh, model from uh, Thingiverse, uh, specifically uh, one meant for a whoop, and modified it using Tinkercad. So if you've never used Tinkercad, it's sort of a, um, a child's version of uh, Autodesk. It's, it's really, um, it's actually a pretty powerful tool, all things considered. Um, but what it, it works with STL files pretty nicely, uh, which was one of the reasons why I kind of prefer it over uh, something like Autodesk Fusion, where um, you'll sit there for three or four hours and plot away to create a shape that really shouldn't take that long to create. And um, that's one of the nice things about the, um, the Tinkercad is that it works with primitives uh, very well and very fast. There's a nice menuing system for, for dealing with them. 
So uh, that's what I did, and this is what I came up with. So the basic shape I got uh, from the uh, the version uh, the, from the STL file that I, I started with was sort of this uh, this triangular design, and that is to fit down over these studs here, um, just like that. And uh, the rest of this, this 20 meter or 20 millimeter wide um, holder, and this little uh, dipped front here, I um, I basically mocked up in Tinkercad, and I set it down on top of that that original STL file, and wiped out all the bits I didn't need with basically negative shapes. And what I ended up with was this nice, somewhat compact uh, little holder. Now the only thing missing here, uh, you'll notice, are screw holes. So that's what I'm going to poke next are these uh, little screw holes and uh, uh, hopefully we will uh, get this guy mounted up onto the quad tonight. Uh, speaking of the quad, I've already uh, loaded up um, uh, Betaflight 411 so it should be good to go. Uh, once I get this camera mounted I'll get it uh, situated back on top here and then I'll take it back over and uh, uh, make sure my motors are spinning in the right direction and uh, I've got the um, I've got a 3s on the charger and we've got our blades our props here and uh, uh, we're looking pretty good so our smoke test is done our beta flight works uh, you know uh, we got to test our controller but aside from that set up our modes um, we should be in good shape I think uh, we might need to do some resource mapping because I don't think I laid this out in the strict beta flight way but whatever it's pretty straightforward to take care of that um, just by doing some simple maps and uh, yeah so we're getting pretty darn close I think um, so let me see what I'm dealing with right now is um, this guy comes down uh, this screw comes down through here and uh, comes down almost to the bottom of this and that's just not enough to thread into the um, the standoff that's on here so I need to find a slightly longer M2 screw and we need to pull this guy out and it's not threaded and it is TPU this is just the same smart TPU and I tried a, a different printing today I used, um, I'm using a Prusa uh, Mark 3S, and um, I use the uh, printer profile, is that right? The print, uh, printer settings profile for Pretty PLA V4, which you can find on um, Thingiverse, or I'm sorry, not Thingiverse, GitHub. And um, the generic flex uh, profile uh, L, uh, uh, for Sane Spark TPU, I use the generic flex um, filament profile. And those two things together really made this uh, really a very nice print. I, I have just a handful of strings here, and uh, one little trick I'll show you. You know, you can't really see these strings on the video, or maybe you can. Uh, I'm looking up trying to see them in there. It's kind of tough. Uh, but um, anytime you have strings like that, you can just, and they're done. That's it. They're gone. No more strings. I mean, little tiny strings like that, done. And that's it. They're gone. It's really a useful tool to have, the lighter. I've uh, mentioned it many times. Do not. Do not hesitate to add one to your toolbox. It is very, very useful. Yep, so I'm going to try and get this guy threaded in through this hole. And these holes are a little snug, I'm not going to lie. I am um, kind of surprised at how, how snug these holes are. But, uh, hey means they should hold pretty well and it's TPU so it should stretch well enough all right and is the 
this going to work. It's going to be enough. That should be plenty. That little bit, plus a little bit of compression, that should be like three millimeters worth of thread. Something close to that anyway. That should do it. Alright, so now we know what we're doing with that. We'll find three more and get those. We'll just leave it in. So that's one, two, and that's three. Alright, and now we need to poke some holes. So for this, I'm going to take my uh, Sharpie and we're going to take the camera make sure we've got there's a little tiny faint arrow in the uh, metal this metal casing back here we're going to take this guy and we're going to set it so that that arrow is pointing up and um, as you can see it just kind of sets in there pretty nice it's not it's not held in there with anything but that's why I'm going to put the screw holes in Right. So I want it to have just a, a little bit of up tilt, and if we want, we can even give it a little bit more up tilt. Um, but I think that is going to be just about perfect for an indoor whoop style HD flyer. Um, at least I hope so. And if we're flying it outside, that's fine too. We can just throw it, throw it around just a little bit. And I am just taking this. I ain't that a pisser. Okay. Attempt number two. Alright, we want right there, smack dab. Yeah, I'd say I got it. First try. And then on this side, it's hard to tell because I used what's called rectilinear infill which creates sort of a, a weird wavy pattern. Yeah. And that wavy pattern is a bit tough to see through. But I think that's okay. I think that'll work. And now we want it. Is this what I want to do? No, I don't think it is. I think I want two grand. Yes. That's right. All of these guys. So we are I have just a ton of drill bits. That ain't a drill bit. That's a drill bit. That should do it. Then uh, this little guy. Can't remember the last time I charged this damn battery, but if you ever get a chance, this Home Depot drill isn't too bad. I'm not going to win any awards, but overall, I'm pretty pleased with the performance of the battery. We need to do this slightly differently. What do I have? I have this guy. 
This is my workbench, it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, so. Alright, one down, one to go. Good. Good deal. Good with that. And we're going to run probably these guys in through these holes. Yeah, force them in. Yep. That should work. This guy too. Okay. Once again, got a little a few strings, and those are pretty much done. And those are done. And we just slide it on in. And now, let's see if we can get this guy to tighten up. There's one. I think we hit it right. That's a DJI whoop mount, right there. Boop. Yeah, I'd say I'm pretty happy with that, honestly. I, I really, I don't think I could have engineered better. Let's put it that way. Because I am just not all that great with cat. finished in a couple of minutes. Charge. Get it all set up in beta flight. That will look much better. And I apologize for all the camera issues I've been having. I think I, I don't know what happened, but something with the card. Maybe I, I just need to go and reformat all the cards.
fairly soon. Yeah, so the next question is whether or not to put screws in these props or if I should floss them. I was thinking about flossing them. Doing them up that way. I've never done floss props. I suppose we could spare a screw or two keep them on there. Okay. Alright. Alright, we're just going to run it. Alright, so... One side, flip it around, Well, this is a bit fiddlier than I'd really hoped it'd be. I gotta say, I'm not that unhappy with this. Right? I mean... How's this gonna fly? Put a zip tie here and here, just to kind of hold that in place, you know. But wow, yeah. Yeah, it definitely needs screws for the props. But I like it. Alright, we are waiting on this battery to charge to fig finish up the configuration of this guy, get it registered, yep. 
and then we should be good. All right. Well, I think that's actually it for tonight. I don't think I'm going to do much more other than wait for this battery to charge, and then we'll see uh, if I can get this guy um, configured, the modes configured using the DJI remote, and um, make sure everything is working properly. And uh, with any luck, uh, I won't bring it back to the bench. Uh, I'll just take it and uh, test fly it. And, uh, We'll see some good HD onboard video of that. But uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, again, sorry if this video is all chopped to shit because I, I'm guessing that the first half of this build is just garbage. Um, so uh, again, apologies. I've been dealing with a new camera, cards, the whole nine yards. It's just been a cluster. So, yep. Hopefully that that's all fixed for the next build. Speaking of next builds, let's talk next builds. Okay. In case anybody is interested, likes watching these. The next builds are here. This is the list. Um, DJI GEP RC AIO F15 6000 KV on an HX115 frame with two inch props that's what we got the next build I'm hoping to do is called a cream puff and it's a 1s build and um, that I'm gonna try and use some 1402s but failing those I have these Emacs um, 0802s and they have a one and a half millimeter shaft and I think I can get three inches on spinning on these guys now these are 1550 kV, so they're a little torquier, uh, which I'm hoping they'll they'll handle that 3S a little better, or that, I'm sorry, 3S, the three inch props a little better than, um, than uh, like a six series, uh, like an 0603 or something like that. The, excuse me, the 1402s are really, I'm really hoping those work on the screen puff, but they might just be too heavy. I, I haven't even tried them out yet, so we'll see. Um, and that, like I said, that cream puff frame I got the other day is over here buried in the box. Um, a little further down, um, this is the uh, Beta FPV Meteor 65, and I do have some 603s coming in for this, as well as two different types of three and four bladed props for this, and the um, I also have a uh, uh, Beta FPV Silverware, which is the, <laughs> it's a, you, you can't upgrade it, it's on, not upgradable. So hopefully I can get it to work, uh, we'll see. Uh, it doesn't run Crossfire, so I'm not holding my breath. But it does have uh, Free Sky on it, and um, it says it supports D16, so I'm, uh, I'm going to do Free Sky D16. Anyway. Um, but the cream puff and then the spin tech. Uh, the spin tech has a, uh, a special um, 12 amp uh, lumineer with a Mamba um, flight controller. Uh, lumineer 12 amp something or another. Um, and then uh, after those, uh, I'm trying to get the, those next two done before my vacation, which starts the day after Christmas. And um, after that, I'm hoping to start in on these next four, and we'll see about that, uh, those. And then that brings us hopefully into February or thereabouts. And I want to do as my first build in the, the early part of those months uh, the QAV Ultralux, um, or I'm sorry, the Ultralight. Um, it, it, that's I, I'm shooting for like 175 grams uh, uh, dry weight, 320 grams flying weight. Um, just to kind of compare that to uh, one a little further down, which is a Craven. And um, then in March, we'll probably do our cheap shit builds. Uh, these are the cheap, um, um, the cheapest quads basically you can buy 
um, for the money and uh, um, see if we can make those uh, fly and perform as well as really any of these others uh, that I end up building. So that'll be in the future. That's kind of what I'm, uh, I'm thinking. Um, so if you have comments or suggestions, I'm all ears. Uh, I, I love building weird stuff. Oh. That noise. That noise. It's the good noise. Okie dokie. Actually, you know what? I haven't even I haven't even hooked this guy up to 3S yet because you actually need to power the flight controller and the DJI stack um, in order to uh, install the uh, firmware and everything else and register it and do the whole DJI experience nonsense. So I'm going to take this upstairs to the office and do all that, which is where I do all my DJI stuff. So, yep, going to go do that. And yes, I am going to use my trusty smoke stopper just in case I bridged something or snafu'd something while attempting to mount a flight controller that is not typically mounted like this. Good God. You know, I just looking at this, I'm like, really? Really, Bob? Th this, this is what you've done? Jesus. Oh, come on. Alright, fine. You win. I'll undo it. Yes, yes, yes. That's the correct way to do it. Yes. See, now it's in there. And then this one, I'll do the same one. I just don't like the way that's sitting in there. The other side, I reckon, is okay, but this one, this one, not so much. Okay. Push that guy up a little bit and then down the hole. Take them up. Yeah, I, 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 I dig it. It's, it's, it's just floppy enough that it'll fly. Yep. Yeah, let's, let's get the last, last of my zip ties in place. Yeah, I'm running low on zip ties. Never thought I'd say those words. So you can kind of see what I'm going for here. Whatever. If it hits the wires, it hits the wires. Nothing we can do about it now. Not too tight. Just comfortably snug. Alright. Yep. Get those guys a little twist. Yep. One more. One more for good measure.
Let's see if this battery even fits in there. Why not? Well, not like that it doesn't. Let's go around the back side. Yep, something like that. I'll figure out a way to make it work. Keep it out of the prop somehow. Some way, somehow. Get another little piece of a grip on, on the bottom. Hold that battery pack a little snug. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Yeah, so camera's still recording. Hopefully everything turned out well. All right, gonna call it here, take this upstairs, and uh, we'll see some flight video next, I think. Oh, welcome back to the bench. We've got this guy all wrapped up and it's got the battery on it. Now let's go ahead and take that off real quick. I just want to do a, uh, a quick, uh, actually, you know what we're going to do first? We're going to put the props on. That's probably the quickest and fastest thing we can do. And then we can be done done. So we want props out on this guy. Get run props out and props out. And then this guy goes this way. Mm -hmm. Nope. Uh, come on. Did I grab four of the exact same prop I did? Good God. That would, like, if I were a betting man, that would never happen. Yep, props in. And there. And that guy goes out towards. Now these guys require a two millimeter screw. And we're gonna pull out this guy. On this. Uh, yeah. If we come down from the top, we got just a couple of threads that I'll be plenty, I should think. Let's, let's just double check. All these are about the same. Yeah. Yep. This guy put it in. They don't need to be He-Man tight, just uh, just snug down, because all they're doing is keeping it from ejecting, basically. There's almost no real stress on these guys.
actually. I'm not going to use that one. Yeah, this uh, this has all been configured, so we're all set up in Betaflight. We've got all of our modes configured. I've got just about everything installed I need to install, and um, we're gonna check the dry weight, and then we're gonna check it with a 650. And I got a 350, or uh, I'm sorry, a 450 that I think might actually be slightly better weight to performance maybe we'll see All right I mean you never know until it's in the air all right there's that guy you're going to Hello, and it's 117 grams dry. <laughs> oh man, that is uh, that's priceless right there. 128 grams is that what that really says? 129. Okay, and uh, it's it's. Uh, Hundred and ninety a mini quad, hundred and ninety-two grams, yeah. That's uh Yeah. So that's seventy. And that's one twenty-four. So yeah, about a hundred Let's check it with this. Uh, I have a, here's a 300. So 150 grams. Meh. Still way heavier than I'd like. And then uh, somewhere over here. Somewhere. Somewhere. Uh, I don't know where they are. Oh yeah, here we go. 160. Is that right? Oh, come on. Yeah, so that's 40 grams. So yeah, that works out. About 120. <laughs> it, it's a heavy quad, I'm not going to lie. It's a whole lot heavier than I thought it would be, but we will turn this guy off and we will put a card in it and we've got this guy, uh, half of these open one way, half the open the other, you know, that guy aside. Right, 200 gram micro quad. Oh, come on. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's on the side of the thing. All right, there it is. And we're going to run this wire this guy right about like that and 
need a another one of these guys come in kind of hold this guy down Okay, looking good, looking good. All right, we are ready to rock and roll. We got this guy. We got these we can put away. We got our yellow, mighty yellows. And our 4S, which we're not using right now. And done all right that's it uh, the next video you'll see is of me uh, uh, testing this outside and uh, uh, just giving it a good once over up and down the street and then uh, I may take it up to the school if I have time and fly it around there but uh, that's it that concludes the build I, uh, thank you for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed this one I've got some more micros coming up and um, I uh, Looking forward to uh, getting those knocked out here in this Christmas week. So I'm off from now until after the new year. And uh, it gives me some time to uh, uh, take a family vacation and uh, do some builds. So hopefully there will be a couple of videos coming out. The Why Not Fix. Uh, I'm editing right now. So uh, i got a couple of things happening. And uh, you'll have seen those already posted, of course. Uh, so, duh. But, yeah, being a YouTuber is weird. Yeah, your time is all jacked up. Anyway, thanks for watching. So uh, rather than the usual flight video, I decided to uh, uh, just take it out and uh, fly it around my father's property. Um, he lives way out in Rappahannock, Virginia, so it's kind of rural and uh, uh, it's a, a bit different than, uh, you know, me flying around the school that I usually do. Um, but uh, the thing uh, did much better than I expected. Uh, this is on the, uh, the 450 pack if I recall correctly. And um, this is my first, you know, real flight other than just a hover test. Uh, and I, I kind of ran out of time, honestly, uh, you know, with the holidays and everything. So um, this was the, the Saturday we went over to his place to uh, just kind of get, uh, uh, get our Christmas done on that Saturday before our vacation. So uh, yeah, we, the, the thing is flying uh, really much better than I expected. Um, it handles okay for as heavy as it is. Uh, um, you know, I, I really couldn't ask much more, but I noticed something, uh, and you'll see it in a minute, um, that the, the 650 battery has a bit more, I'm going to say prop wash, but it's, it's different. It's uh, oscillations as you throttle up. Um, so I'm not really sure uh, how to um, solve that on something like this. I'm sure it's, you know, if I could get RPM filtering working, I'm sure it would take care of it. But um, given the, the nature of, um, you know, this guy, it, it's probably not realistic um, just because it's a, you know, get bar C all in one. Who knows what version of... Um, what version of BL Hell yes it's running it's probably not JESC or uh, compatible but um, I might look into that if the uh, Ninja doesn't fly very well um, which is the the next build for this equipment um, here I am doing a couple of flips and I turn it around and do a roll I believe um, just to kind of um, you know check to see um, you know how it response to my stick inputs it seems to do fine and I'm cruising down around this scraggle which I can see just fine in the video uh, I saw that in the, the, the monitors uh, around the, the goggles um, and you know so I can avoid scraggle on the ground my father has tons of fruit trees that are you know very 
they have a bunch of small limbs on them for trees to. So, you know, I fly in and around those without any issues. I'm ducking under trees and under branches and limbs. Um, and I, I actually flew the my uh, tiny shark here and uh, ended up bouncing it off uh, a bunch of scraggle uh, without any without any issues uh just i really like the way that thing flies but uh, uh yeah this dji build turned out um much much better than i i, I really could have hoped for and uh, yeah you can kind of see as i as i drop down here it got a little bit wonky and then uh you know just uh, here i am just doing some hover around shots of the the property and um just trying to get a, a good feel for the the drone uh see if there's anything that needs to change but it, it i mean surprisingly um at least for a drone this heavy it, it performed uh pretty well yeah it's it's really not not too bad so um my uh my initial impressions were that it's not something I'm going to enjoy flying around um, all that much. It, I kind of feel like I want a different frame under this. It feels a little top heavy. Um, it feels like there needs to be, um, it just needs to be squished down a little bit. Does that make sense? Like it just needs to be a little bit more compact. I think the 450 batteries are going to work out. I got a minute and a half out of my 450. I got almost three minutes out of a 650. Um, but I feel like the 450 just flew better uh, overall. So I kind of feel like uh, that's probably um, where this build is headed towards that uh, the, the Flex RC Ninja uh, with the 450. And um, hopefully uh, I'll get that together and you can see what that's about. That's it for the uh, DJI HX-115 build. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, had a lot of fun doing it. And um, I'm actually looking forward to uh, getting it back on the bench and swapping the components over to uh, a slightly different frame, one that uh, is more engineered to handle um, you know, this sort of quad. Uh, I know it's super heavy, and I know that there's just not a whole lot we can do about that right now until the CADEX stuff comes out. But uh, yeah, uh, it was uh, great fun, and I uh, hope you enjoyed watching it. Thanks again.